yeah so uh, good afternoon everyone uh, so welcome to this uh, session uh, uh, that is in remote industry lecture on uh, smart grid technologies and standards so we have today our speaker uh, mr pradesh m who is an engineering officer from central power research institute so with this brief introduction uh, over to uh, mr pradesh to start his presentation thank you uh, thank you professor uh, pradeep and i feel honored for you know, you know uh, presenting uh, before the uh, students of iit hyderabad and uh, it's my privilege to talk on this smart grid technologies and standard which is you know uh, very upcoming and uh, evolving uh, technology and requirement for um, any students of uh, power electronics and power systems so i am i also uh, you know uh, thank uh, iit hyderabad you know for considering uh, cpri and uh, you know, asking us to present before the students uh, so uh, uh, now i you know uh, as the uh, uh, professor uh, explained i was uh, uh, introduced i am also working in uh, uh, providing consultancy for uh, uh, you know, indian utilities even uh, including tsspdcl uh, hyderabad on we are working on the smart grid consultancy project which is uh, happening at the jd metal industrial area and uh, you know it is very important that you know we move towards uh, technology savvy and uh, uh, it is uh, time uh, to utilize the technology to fullest extent and see automate uh, the existing uh, system and the especially the power systems network uh, and uh, if any of you have any questions you can interrupt me any time so we will have an interactive session rather than uh, one way uh, monotonous presentation okay so uh, my agenda for the present today's presentation would be uh, modern power grid uh, communication protocols and the relevant standards for smart grids and uh, technologies uh, smart energy metering substation automation and and the testing and we'll conclude so when we say uh, Uh, modern grid a smart grid it is a smart electrical network that uses analog and both uh, digital information and communications technology to gather information and to act on the information in an automated fashion so that uh, there is an improvement in efficiency reliability economics and sustainability of generation to distribution of electricity so here when we say generation to distribution it also you uh, know it, it could be from uh, a huge generating station or a distributed generation or a microgrid to the end consumer even the uh, consumer a domestic consumer okay so the internet and communication technology is used to improve how electricity flows from power plants to the end consumer and it allows now what is the consumers to interact with the grid or the utility okay through their smart meters placed at home where they can uh, participate in the demand response programs and the utility can communicate to the end users or the uh, end consumers including the domestic consumers about the requirements of uh, if there is any supply demand gap then they can you know uh, message the consumers to switch on uh, only the uh, you know priority loads and switch off non priority loads so that the peak uh, requirement is uh, you know shaped and uh, it integrates new and improved technologies in the operation of the grid so when we talk about smart grid okay it is applicable for all uh, generation uh, utilities transmission utilities distribution utilities and uh, including the consumers so uh, when we see this smart grid and uh, the utilities uh, generation utilities are uh, you know it is you know confined to a particular area geographical area where uh, you know power is generated and uh, the system is automated where the controls could and monitoring is happening within the uh, you know their premises and uh, you know the data is provided remotely to the uh, respective uh, stakeholders uh like the load dispatch centers and other uh, no, uh, statutory bodies uh and transmission also you know to major extent they are automated 
okay so uh, remotely we, they can control and monitor various substations and the transmission lines could be monitored and it is you know fairly automated and uh, if you see the other uh, distribution utility and the network you no know, it is very complex and you know the, the automation level is very poor uh, you know uh, in any uh, distribution utilities especially the state owned utilities so because you know there are many reasons the major ones are you know there are you know, plenty of consumers okay if you see a transmission utility there will be some a few distribution companies who would consume their uh, you know uh, power so their end consumers are very limited but if you see a distribution uh, company their you know uh, consumers are a domestic consumer who pay a monthly bill of 100 rupees or low, uh, below and uh, you know they can have a huge industry also so their consumer base is too wide and the uh, you know the geography uh, uh, where the uh, company is present is very dense so it is very complex in nature to automate their entire system and network so we see most of the places uh, still uh, you know manual operation is going on and the electromechanical devices are being used their uh, power uh, this one no the power losses uh, are uh, huge and it is coming down in india but no it is very difficult to locate where the theft is happening or it is, is it because of uh, the uh, electrical losses uh, are what we call it as at and uh, c losses uh, aggregate technical and commercial losses so uh, it is very difficult to manage their entire network and uh, here if the automation is taking place so it would be a real boon for both the consumers and the utilities so uh, the major uh, automation should, that is being concentrated in, uh, in smart grid implementations is in, uh, in the distribution network so uh, for a power system requirements there are many challenges in this area that is managing the increasing demand supply gap so uh, demand is you know, increasing day by day because of you know various uh, new gadgets appliances uh, coming in and uh, uh, no the new loads like you know the metros are coming in uh, the uh, urban areas or uh, the electric hybrid, hybrid electrical vehicles are you know now be, uh, being uh, used and it is uh, you know consuming a lot of power uh, where you know these are all not uh, being planned the existing network is not planned for such new loads but you know these are all coming uh, suddenly and you know new loads are being added so uh, the uh, utility should able be able to manage their network in such a way that you know these new loads are accepted and uh, there is no disturbance in the network and uh, reduction in uh, greenhouse emission increasing uh, renewable energy sources and uh, decreasing fossil uh, uh, fossil fuel usage the conventional ones and uh, new electric loads as i told and urban transportation and now even electric buses are being introduced uh, in indian cities uh, and metros are anyways there and critical asset management and dealing with security threats this is becoming a very major uh, you know issue because uh, now power system is considered as a critical infrastructure and uh, there are various you know uh, security measures to be taken these days because uh the electrical network is exposed at, uh, no to the uh, outside world through uh, the internet and adaptive to disturb uh, distributive and rapid changing technologies and meeting customer expectations and regulatory and statutory requirements so uh, meeting these requirements and the challenges the utilities have to uh, rise to the occasion to meet these requirements and the only way is by you know implementing some automation projects and uh, uh, monitoring their uh, network remotely and uh, including control and uh, some steps being adopted uh, uh, st are started uh, uh, by the utilities uh, from quite some time uh, maybe as a pilot basis or a steady projects uh, or you know the ami the automated advanced metering infrastructure the scada uh, for distribution and automation 
fault management equipments are being used use of renewable energy sources at a distribution uh, level uh, we have now rooftop solar uh, coming up uh, in a big way so there are uh, no push from the uh, uh, mnre uh, the ministry of uh, non renewable uh, uh, resources also uh, giving a mandate that you know, allowing even including domestic consumers to put rooftop solar and pump back power back to the grid and i understand professor is also you know working on uh, renewables and the solar uh, you know monitoring and um, control in a, uh, in but some projects uh, at critical assessment of uh, their uh, you know assets and mobile workforce uh, synchronizer monitoring security communications and surveillance so these are a few steps which utilities have already uh, you know started taking care and uh, when we talk about smart grid for uh, distribution network so it pradish, is network of networks uh, pradish i have one question yes so yes you mentioned this ami and yes. also of solar and all so uh, what is the extent to which this technologies are being used you know like in if if you say all over the country as of 2020 so hmm. what percentage are coming under ami and uh, uh, something like that uh, uh, any rough estimate yeah uh, so uh, no ami now uh, since last 4 5 years you know there was some uh, funding from uh, government of india uh, ministry of power to uh, the state uh, distribution companies so they started doing some pilots there were 14 uh, pilots announced by uh, the government and the 14 utilities uh, took up uh, these pilot projects and most of the 14 uh, smart grid pilots so most of the 14 pilots had a smart uh, uh, smart metering and ami as one of their component so if you see this uh, percentage wise most of them are uh, you know doing some pilots uh, in a certain area of their uh, network and uh, the, uh, usually i mean the standard also was standard for smart meters uh, which we will touch upon in, in later slides was released in uh, 2015 and uh, the product actually was uh, no out in the market uh, late 2016 and uh, then they had had some you know technical issues on communications and other things uh, so uh, the utilities went for pilots Uh, for smart meters and uh, ami now uh, esl uh, no uh, uh, esl is uh, no uh, procuring meters for a uh, few states like uttar pradesh and uh, haryana uh, uh, and they are uh, no on behalf of the state utilities they are procuring and uh, deploying these projects in a bigger way bigger than uh, the project scale i mean pilot scale Uh, so uh, it is you know percentage wise it is very less and the future i can say is uh, smart meters and the ami uh, there is a mandate from ministry of power also uh, to all state utilities that you no know, we have to replace all existing meters including you no know, static meters uh, the, the uh, static meters with the uh, dlms technologies and the electromechanical meters all with uh, smart meters but uh, uh, since uh, there is you know the few huge funds required that is one uh, you know place where uh, the utilities have to take a call uh, of how to replace these meters because you know the funding modalities are uh, different and uh, uh, there is a huge cost also involved in replacing all these meters but uh, you know the new meters which uh, the utilities are procuring most of them are, are going for smart meters but not in a big scale uh, but uh, you know wherever they are implementing uh, new uh, townships uh, so there they are uh, going with uh, these smart meters and even in uh, hyderabad uh, the jd metla area so uh, there are smart meters uh, available uh, in the project area uh, supplied by uh, ec okay okay thank you yeah okay Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, smart grid uh, network is you know is a network of networks uh, so when we see the uh, uh, distribution area network so there are large uh, you know huge uh, components uh, which are to be monitored and uh, possibly controlled okay like uh, the distribution automation devices 
uh, outage management, uh, uh, the power quality sensors, now uh, hybrid electric vehicles, uh, and uh, their mobile crews are to be you know uh, placed in uh, strategic locations so that you know they can attend to any uh, uh, falls. So and also if we see the uh, home area network now. Uh, there are uh, appliances like washing machines, uh, the air coolers, uh, uh, other heating uh, equipments, all coming with communicable uh, no, uh, capability. So even uh, the uh, consumption and uh, can be mo monitored and uh, also controlled remotely. Okay, so uh, there are appliances which are uh, no, uh, available with communicable uh, uh, features. So uh, again, home area network is again a uh, good subject where you know, a lot of automation is uh, taking place. So if you see, for example, how uh, automation and uh, you know, uh, control monitoring remotely helps in uh, you know, uh, identification and isolation and restoration falls. Uh, if you see any conventional uh, set, uh, setup of uh, automation, uh, or feed, say here there, is, there are two feeders, feeder one and feeder two. Okay, so there is a normally open point uh, here. Uh, so the feeder one is uh, you know powering uh, this area up to this point. Okay, and uh, feeder two is uh, powering the area up to uh, the normally open point. So these are all uh, two uh, area uh, where feeder one or feeder two are uh, supplying power. And this is the normally open point. Okay, so uh, if there is any fault, we can close this and open the other uh, uh, breakers. So here we have two breakers: the solid block, uh, uh, square blocks, uh, filter one and filter two. Here uh, the normal condition is closed. Okay, the filled blue box is closed, and here it is open. So this, uh, no, the lines are uh, the ring main units. And this is the circuit breaker. So imagine that you know we, there is a fault at this location. Okay. So what happens normally is when there is a fault here, then uh, the circuit breaker here trips. Okay. So there will be no power to the entire area where feeder two is uh, supplying. Okay. But the fault is at only one location. So uh, when uh, there is a fault and there is a tri trip in the circuit breaker of feeder two, then uh, you know, manually uh, the uh, you know, the maintenance staff go to the uh, field. They check whether there is a fault in this uh, area between the feeder and the first uh, ring main unit. Uh, they will uh, you know, uh, open this uh, uh, you know, uh, RMU, close this breaker. Okay, so there is no fault here. So they go to the next RMU, they do this again and see whether there is again a trip or something. No, so they close this and then they go to the next uh, no RMU and this, this is how the manually they do uh, from uh, one RMU to another RMU if there are RMUs. If there is no RMUs, then uh, even no, the entire uh, feeder, there will be no power unless the fault is restored. So typically to locate uh, the fault, uh, the place of fault, it will take some time. Okay, and uh, well, once the fault is, uh, the area of fault is identified, so this is between this RMU and this RMU, so they will close these uh, no, RMUs and then close the feeder and restore the power to, up to this point. Okay, so it will take about say a minimum of one hour or two, uh, isolate the fault. Okay, and then they will manually close this normally open point and this area is supplied by feeder one. Okay, until the fault is uh, restored. So this is how uh, you know, manually fault is identified, isolated and uh, restored. So this uh, the cycle takes at least one hour's time if the crew is ready and uh, no, they are able to go to uh, the uh, point in time. And the field in time. So the same thing when we see uh, the automated uh, scenario. So now there is uh, you know, uh, the same 
feeder 1 and feeder 2, two feeders are there. And we have an automated RNU at uh, two, three locations here. Okay. So we can have automated uh, RMUs, uh, ring main units throughout, but again, no, we have to balance between the cost and the uh, requirements. Okay, so it is uh, at least we can automate, uh, at least start with few uh, automation components. Okay, so uh, here we have chosen three uh, RMUs, which is automated. Okay, and uh, there are FPIs, fault passage indicators, at all RMU locations. Okay, so we will see that uh, this is the utility, and there is the uh, data is going to the utility control center. We can see all the pa fault passage indicator in green. Okay, that means there is no fault. Okay, so everything is the system is healthy and everything is working fine. Okay, so now if we see that if there is a fault in this location, okay, in the same point. So then what happens is, uh, so the same thing, you know, the fault current has flown uh, in this feeder too. Okay, so this green uh, fault passage indicator indication turns to red. Okay, and the circuit breaker is open. And this fault passage indicator will also communicate to the control center. So the, uh, you know, the staff uh, or the engineer working in the control center will identify that you know, there is fault passage indicator is red till this point and green here. That means there's no fault current flowing here. So they, uh, he can identify that the fault is between these two RMUs. Okay, so now what he can do is from uh, remotely, he can operate this RMU which is automated. He can open this RMU, okay. He opens this RMU and closes this circuit breaker. So uh, within a few minutes, one or two minutes, no, the uh, power is restored till this RMU. Okay, so uh, which earlier took about one hour's time for you know, the consumers in this area to get power. Now, within few minutes, uh, the power is restored. Okay, so now uh, the, uh, there is, since there is no automated components in between these two RMUs, uh, so they have to send that manual, uh, you know, the crews manually to rectify and isolate. So uh, the same, the message is passed on to the crew, and the uh, team arrives, and they, you know, uh, they can uh, open this RMUs manually, and close this, uh, you know, other uh, remotely close this RMU, and restore power in rest of the area, and they can work on uh, the faulty portion of the system. So this takes uh, no uh, less than 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes if uh, everything is fine and uh, the communication is uh, seamless. So this way, you know, we can uh, restore the faults and isolate the faulty area uh, uh, in a very short span of time. Uh, I hope you understood the concepts. Any doubts? Any questions? Uh, hello, sir. It's uh, it's Hiran here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. how to decide the uh, optimal place of RMU? And yeah, nice question. So, we have to uh, place. Yeah, correct. So, it is a good uh, you know, question. So, optimal placing of RMU, it again depends on the area, the number of consumers, okay, uh, and uh, also the location uh, or the, uh, uh, this one. No? So, uh, say there is a huge feeder, okay, so we can have uh, RMUs at strategic locations, depending on the consumer's uh, uh, no, uh, population. Okay, and the other one is, uh, see, RMUs are placed. You can see, you know, most of the time it is on the roadside. Okay, so again, we cannot place RMUs on all the roads because that may be a VIP area or a very commercial area. Uh, so they don't allow to place any structures there. So there are you no know, the same thing was faced in Hyderabad also when RMUs were placed. Uh, you no know, people uh, don't allow uh, to place RMUs in front of. They say you no, know, this is in front of my establishment, my house. So you are digging my you know land in front of. Uh, you no, know, it, it is again you know the uh, there is uh, uh, there should be a compromise for 
uh, having this also and usually it is uh, at the strategic points where uh, the uh, crew can easily go and uh, approach the for isolating and uh, uh, restoring if, uh, in case of faults okay so uh, the, uh, the utility can uh, decide uh, the locations and the based on the number of consumers and there are uh, maybe you uh, maybe aware there are two way i mean three way rmus five way rmus seven way and uh, rmus so uh, this rmu also you uh, know uh, feeds power to you uh, know it branches out to various uh, again uh, local areas okay so depending on the uh, density of population and consumers you know we can uh, decide where we can uh, optimal, uh, optimally place this rmu okay. okay sir thank you okay so uh, now uh, you know coming to standards okay so uh, we have a uh, lot of standards for smart grids okay in india we align to iec standards this is an international electrotechnical commission standard so in india you know most of the standards we follow is based on iec okay and also we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, bis you know, bureau of indian standards which inherits most of the iec standards and modifies to the indian requirements or it uh, you know adopts the iec standards as it is so there are you no know, very you know many standards uh, for uh, smart grids okay identified standards for smart grid okay so it uh, iec says over 100 iec standards have been identified as relevant to smart grid standards okay so the there are few here uh, in this uh, slide and uh, you can you know go to the web uh, iec website and uh, see there are you know uh, various standards available for smart grid where the first column you can see the relevance you know where they have to, uh, mentioned which it is you know a core standard for smart grid okay very high relevance for smart grid it is relevant but not very high it is so they have uh, you know they classify it as low relevant okay and medium relevance so based on the relevance the ec also has classified all the standards for smart grids to uh, core high uh, low and medium okay so iec also there is a very nice you uh, know mapping or uh, structure they have identified uh, in their website okay if you uh, go to their website i will just show I don't know if you are able to see my screen. Uh, so, can you see the screen? I... Hello. Your slides are there, sir. This oh, is slides. Yes. okay uh, can you share uh, see the screen uh i see yes sir yeah so this is uh, the screen i think you can, are able to see smart grid standards map yes sir yes sir yeah okay so so this is uh, no uh, very interactive uh, Uh, standards map which iec has uh, you know come out uh, you can browse this smart uh, standardsmap.com so here you now they have identified uh, the most relevant standards for each and every applications okay so uh, if you see this uh, you know generic substation if you go here you know it will list up the list of standards which are applicable to that particular uh, Uh, no here it is phasor data concentrator and there are use cases this yellow dots no we use the use case of those uh, standards and the applications of the relevant uh, equipments so likewise no any 
equipment you you can you know you can go and see which are all the relevant standards uh, and uh, you know the use cases of all these uh, equipments so this is a good map uh, we, uh, mapping of standards which uh, is there from iec yeah so we we'll go back to the presentation Okay, so this is you uh, know the screen mapping screen which uh, is given by the IEC. So you can go through the and uh, you know it is very important. You know, we should whatever uh, implementations are happening, it has to be as per some uh, international uh, national standards. Okay, so in India also, I hope you are able to see my screen uh, slides. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in India also, no, uh, whenever we take up some projects or some uh, uh, no, uh, concepts, so there should be some approvals of uh, regulators for uh, uh, you know all the state utilities, all the utilities have uh, regulations. Okay, there are state regulators, there are central regulator, electricity regulatory commission, state electricity regulatory commissions. So the permissions from these regulators are very uh, very much required for any implementation of new uh, concepts okay so uh, uh, the forum of regulators okay they have come up with smart model smart grid regulations in 2015 okay where you know they have listed out what are all uh, you know the uh, the statutory requirements and regulations which which are allowed you know for the state uh, utilities to take up uh, in the for the smart grid projects like you know if you want to have a different pricing for a different time okay so like you know uh, morning 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock there is one uh, tariff for uh, you know uh, price for uh, uh, you know power usage and uh, afternoon different tariff night time different tariff like you know earlier we had uh, different tariff for telephone okay so similar to that uh, there are different tariffs uh, can be planned for our, our different time zones okay so different time of a day uh, or time of use uh, they say time tod or tou okay so uh, this for different uh, uh, no, uh, time there is a different tariff at peak hours the tariffs may be high and uh, at non peak hours it will be low so this uh, tariff uh, you know, uh, time of day tariff uh, is to be used then you know, the, the, the regulators has to you know, permit the utilities to uh, choose that okay and uh, you know that tariffs should be fixed by the uh, regulators so only then the utilities can take up so this is a concept which is available for you know which is one of the concepts for a smart grid where they can have different uh, time of use or time of day tariff. They can also have some dynamic tariff, you know, where the utility can uh, decide dynamically, you know, if there is any peak uh, demand. Uh, so uh, there's a huge uh, supply uh, gap is huge. Then the utilities, you know, uh, can message their consumers that, you know, if you are using power now, uh, so the uh, power per unit consumption would be plus one rupee or plus two rupees. Okay, so the consumers will you know, switch off their non-priority loads. Okay, so only uh, lights will be used. So uh, so that you no know, the supply demand gap can be reduced. Okay, so for that all these things are new concepts which are which are coming up uh, in smart grid uh, implementations. So for this uh, to be implemented, the utilities have to take. Uh, regulators uh, permissions and uh, the form of regulators are also are also you know knowing these uh, requirements and they have come up with uh, for uh, model smart grid regulations uh, where the individual states can you know we, based on this uh, modify their requirements and for some uh, you know uh, requirements uh, there is no standards available usually whenever you know uh, utility procures an uh, equipment or uh, system they go as per some 
standards existing standards but uh, for some uh, requirements like ami you know which is uh, a new concept and uh, no there is no standards so there are uh, the standard electric central electricity authority has come up with a guideline for implementation of uh, ami so with the existing standards uh, standards are available for meters meters okay but there is no standard available how a data concentrator unit should be how uh, the data from the meter is to be communicated to the external world uh, in uh, no what are the technologies could be used and how uh, who will, who would own those uh, infrastructure so all these things are not available as a standard so uh, ca has come up uh, with some uh, guidelines okay the functional uh, requirement for ami in india and uh, you no know, the utilities can uh, take this as uh, a requirement a guideline and uh, go with their implementations okay. so uh, any doubts so far okay so then <coughs> i will go with uh, <coughs> energy meters because you know energy meter is uh, considered as one of the basic components where from which the utilities earn their revenue and uh, it is deployed to all their consumers uh, including domestic consumers okay so if we see the journey of energy meters we all had electromechanical uh, meters even you know uh, many places we find this uh, still uh, electromechanical meters with uh, you know the disc rotating uh, so uh, this is uh, you know still there even uh, our campus such meters are there okay so then we went with electronic meters and then uh, electronic meters with the display and electronic meters with communication capability then electronic meters with the prepayment features okay and now with smart meters we can have everything a uh, building okay so uh, utilities are replacing these meters existing meters with the smart meters and uh, no having good features if you see the static meters uh, it is capable of sensing measuring and computing various electrical parameters and store uh, it for a period of time okay so generally for uh, if it is uh, uh, no commercial meters for about months time the data is stored and these meters provide information required for billing energy audit accounting load survey demand monitoring power quality forecasting everything okay and meters are read remotely by various techniques and uh, these meters you know the static meters not the smart meters the static energy meters the previous version of smart meters have uh, do not have the uh, communication modem built in okay so they have uh, ports from where we can mount external uh, communication modem and they get the data remotely okay so uh, or we can locally download these meters with hand held units okay so uh, these uh, meters are uh, supposed to be read remotely but you know usually what happens is you no know, utilities are uh, not having this uh, modems uh, placed they again are uh, you know manually read these meters okay so but there is a lot of you uh, know uh, errors creeping in when meters are read manually and we cannot you uh, know read all the parameters uh, though the meters can store various uh, parameters electrical parameters substract parameters uh, tamper uh, parameters but you know only limited parameters may usually required for billing are read okay so uh, so the uh, meter goes beyond you know metering and provide these energy meters uh, provide very meaningful data uh, the range of data covers all uh, billing quality uh, quantities uh, electrical parameters uh, all phase voltage current frequency you know um, power factors uh, various uh, other parameters like tampers and events this is one of the important you know requirement for indian utilities so any uh, kind of tampers can be identified and uh, you know uh, it can uh, communicate what is the tamper what when what time it occurred okay when it was restored 
So all these parameters are uh, stored in the meter. And historical data, uh, the billing data is stored for uh, about six months time, okay, as per the standards. And other uh, data are stored you know, for a period of uh, one month to 45 days. And uh, we can also remotely connect and disconnect uh, these meters and remotely upgrade uh, the firm or update the firmware. Uh, there are also meters capable of meeting the needs of import export category of meters you know, between two utilities, transmission and uh, distribution utilities. There are you know, ABT uh, meters. Okay, and also these meters can uh, measure various power quality measurements. And uh, most of these utility, the utilities are going with new kind of meters, including smart meters. So if you are uh, seeing how the conventionally uh, the meter uh, are read, it is usually, you know, the utility will subcontract the meter reading to some third party uh, agency. They will go from meter to meter to read or download data. If that that is manually done, okay. So if they are reading uh, data manually, then there is high possibility of human errors. And most of the time, it is said that no, it is intentional error than unintentional ones. Okay. So when if the uh, meter reader erroneously records the uh, no reading, then uh, no, then there is a loss for the utility. So these uh, energy meters are money box for any utility and uh, you know if that is uh, read, uh, no, I mean it is read manually and uh, improper way. So then they will be under loss. Okay, so this is very, uh, you know, one of the very uh, important uh, requirement uh, for going for uh, automated uh, meter reading and uh, AMI. And it is con time consuming process only limited parameters especially used for billing is red and the accuracy of these meters are very low and the energy audits performed based on these processes are usually inaccurate because you know, all the meters are not time synchronized uh, if we want to audit uh, energy audit a meter below a transformer say there is 100 uh, meters below a transformer and we want to do energy audit of the transformer Okay, so ideally, all the sum of energy consum consumed uh, in that particular uh, no, 100 meters by the 100 meters, we should tally with the energy consumed by the, I mean, the energy uh, uh, provided by the transformer. But this will not uh, no, accurately match because uh, the time synchronization of the meters are usually not there. and uh, the way if, we, if the meters are read manually, then all the meters are not read at the same time. So there will be a huge error between uh, during this energy audit. Okay, so this is also one of the reason where you know, uh, we say that we have a huge energy uh, loss. Okay, so this is one of the reason where uh, the losses are not accurate. Okay, uh, and uh, meters uh, data used for billing usually will not help for other you know analysis and uh, forecasting purpose so um, the utilities go went for amr okay the automatic meter reading where uh, the meters are uh, you know, retrofitted with uh, external modem and uh, they used to read meter directly uh, remotely by various uh, communication technologies okay uh, so uh, and this helped uh, utilities in uh, reducing human errors okay and their uh, audits were also found to be better the data can be transmitted from uh, from the meter to the utility uh, on request by any communication media so this is one way uh, amr is one way of uh, you know data flow if there is a request then the meter uh, will respond to the request from the utility Okay, so these meters can be placed anywhere. It could be a consumer, uh, domestic consumer, commercial establishments, on the pole. Okay, uh, it may be uh, distribution transformers. So these meters can be read remotely using uh, AMR. Then uh, the utilities went with AMI. Okay, so where the uh, meters we would exchange data in two ways. Okay, so 
uh, uh, even say for example if there is some tamper somebody is tampering a meter the meter will initiate uh, the, you know, the tamper uh, event and uh, it will send the event to the utility on its own if, if, you know it will not wait for the request for, from the utility for reading the meter okay or there could be uh, uh, dynamic tariff okay so pricing the utility can say if you are you know using this using power between uh, night 10 to 12 you will get a rebate of minus 1 rupee okay and instead if you are using between 5 to 8 plus 1 rupee so this information can be passed on to the uh, you know, utility uh, the consumers through the smart meters on their home display units or you know, on their uh, mobile uh, phones okay and uh, uh, they can uh, use the uh, tariffs which are set by the utility for dynamic uh, pricing okay and the time of use uh, this is fixed okay dynamic tariff is uh, it, it, it is dynamically changed by the utility and time of use is fixed by the regulators and uh, no uh, it is announced uh, and uh, fixed the uh, registers are fixed for that particular timings and the tariffs are also uh, announced in advance okay so demand response actions so if, uh, if uh, there is a demand supply gap uh, or shortage of power the easy way of you uh, know reducing uh, the uh, demand is to switch off some of their uh, feeders okay so uh, uh, there is a partial blackout because of uh, shortage of power so this is uh, normally done by the utilities. So to manage this, to overcome this, you know, if the utility sends a message uh, that you no, know, we uh, dear consumers, we are having a sh you know, peak shortage of power. Kindly switch off your non-priority loads, okay, and use it during uh, late hours. Okay, so the uh, and whoever are willing to participate may press the button on the meter uh, or home display unit. So people may voluntarily do that. Okay, so uh, instead of having uh, no power, you know, at least they can enjoy uh, with light fan and team. Okay, so non-priority loads can be shifted to later uh, hours. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, no, the AMI uh, uh, is useful for consumers also. And the utility can communicate with the consumers uh, through their smart meters. Okay, so uh, yeah, using AMI, you know, these energy meters are uh, always powered by electricity. And there are other utilities also like the gas, uh, uh, you know, gas meters, uh, water meters, okay, uh, by from other utilities, which are not generally powered by electricity, okay, they are, you know, battery operated, uh, or it is, uh, you know, manually operated. So if they have a, a meter which is battery operated and uh, which is also communicable, then these meters can communicate to electricity meter once in a while and go to sleep mode. Okay, and this utilities can, uh, respective utilities can uh, hook on to these electro uh, electrical meters and get the data uh, of their, uh, you know, uh, water or uh, gas. Okay, so this is also possible. And the AMI systems includes hardware, software, communication uh, network, the consumer energy display units, okay, the controllers, the customer associated system, metric data management software, tamper detection and communication all together forms the uh, AMI system. So if you see the features of uh, smart meters, uh, uh, it has two way communication okay, between the uh, meter and the utility control center. It stores and communicate data as per the at a programmed interval. Okay, uh, the utility can set some intervals uh, where periodically the utility will poll and get the data. And with smart meters, the meters also push data. Uh, not all, but uh, no, the uh, programmed parameters every uh, five minutes, uh, ten minutes, or at a programmed interval, they can initiate or push data to back to the utility. Uh, not waiting for uh, request from the utility okay and also they can initiate uh, uh, messaging to the utilities whenever there is some tampers or 
you know whatever uh, imbalances or any you know abnormal conditions they can also initiate some uh, communication and options for prepayment and post payment metering so if you see the present prepayment metering so there is uh, there would be some keypads on the meters so we have to uh, you know the hardware itself is different for prepayment meters and uh, you know the postpaid meters normal meters are different okay so uh, if we, they really want to replace uh, normal postpaid meter with the prepaid meters they have to replace the whole meter itself okay some states they say we want to you know remove all the um, meters from government establishments and uh, you know, replace with the uh, prepayment meters like police stations, post office and other things, you know, where uh, people may not um, disconnect power. You know, it will, you know, when the utility staff goes, they say, no, this is the police department, very essential that this, but you know, they don't pay their bills. Okay, so uh, they go for prepayment uh, pre meters in those places uh, or the, somebody is a uh, no, usual defaulter so they go with the prepayment uh, meters okay so so that no they pay their bill in time and get their utility gets their revenue uh, so if they want to go change meters then it is usually change of hardware now with this smart meters you know without change of uh, hardware the utility can set up uh, uh, the meter as a prepayment meter from the uh, control center itself. Okay, so the meter will communicate uh, to the utility as usual, and the uh, uh, the data received are uh, changed to the prepayment uh, feature, and uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, pre prepayment or whatever payment is made. So once that consumption is complete like uh, no prepaid, prepaid uh, mobile phones so the meter will automatically disconnect okay so with an alarm so uh, this way the uh, the utility can use the same hardware and make it uh, prepayment consumer or the post payment consumer anytime okay so it can enable bidirectional measurement of power if somebody is having rooftop solar okay so uh, they can also power back power back to the grid. So the same meter can be used for bidirectional uh, measurement of power. Okay, and uh, the most important thing is, you know, it all should happen in a standard way, and the meter should be based on some standards protocol. So there are other features also. Okay, so uh, so I'll just run through this slide because you know we're short of time. Uh, you know. We can connect disconnect loads uh, from remotely. Okay, if somebody is not paying the bill, the utility need not send someone to disconnect load, they can do it from their control center. Uh, firmware upgrade if there is no new features in the firmware, they could be upgraded remotely instead of uh, going from meter to meter manually. Okay, so the concern is you know, to have a common protocol for communication uh, of these meters. Okay, so the meters, no doubt, they read, uh, they can, uh, you know, store data for, uh, for uh, you know, the programmed intervals. And uh, the only thing is, you know, getting data from the meter is again a challenge, because uh, under this, you know, the smart uh, smart grid scenario or uh, AMR scenario, getting meter data is again a challenge because, you know, each utility will have uh, different uh, suppliers uh, through which uh, through whom they would have procured meters and these meters uh, would be from a proprietary protocol different standards so single software will not be able to read all the meters okay so this again is a huge challenge uh, so uh, the same same we uh, the utility procured meter from manufacturer A uh, uh, six months back and, and now with the same manufacturers they are going to buy a new lot so they give another set of software to read these meters okay so they will tell the old one will not be compatible with this one this is a new set okay all this uh, you know the utilities has to face and it is very difficult to manage many uh, such suppliers so it is always better to go with some standards 
and uh, india did not have any standard and uh, securities you know failed even the amr projects including you know bangalore most of the securities you know could not take up uh, amr for their existing meters so it was found that you know the protocol was the issue and the manufacturers were not ready to share their protocols and there was no standards uh, available in india for you know using this uh, for meter reading okay so uh, it was felt that you no know, we'll uh, bring out some standard and uh, a committee was formed and that committee recommended iec 62056 okay this is a uh, uh, good standard which is you know my, an iec standard and uh, europe most of the countries were following this and uh, it was uh, successful found to be successful and uh, so india also they recommended that we will go with iec 62056 and uh, uh, no uh, india adopted iec 6056 but uh, again there is another uh, issue is uh, yeah uh, the communication there should be a seamless communication between the meter and the uh, control center so that uh, the data is uh, exchanged uh, no uh, regularly okay and the other problem is no india had uh, yeah and uh, this uh, standards ensured interoperability that means you know we need not depend on any uh, manufacturer for their software any third party software could be used for reading this meter okay and the supplier of the meter could be different so that way you know it helped utility to go with uh, a standard based protocol for uh, meter reading okay yeah so how uh, one moment and yeah so this uh, unique is so the iec 62056 which is the uh, meter uh, metering protocol okay so here metering means it can be for electricity it can be for gas water uh, no any uh, kind of metering so they have given uh, in the standard all the list of parameters and they have given a code called object identification system code obs codes okay so this obs codes for each parameter is unique for r phase voltage there is a obs code for uh, you no know, y phase current there is a obs code for frequency there is a obs code okay for uh, power factor r phase power factor there is means so for all uh, you know parameters they have identified a code okay so this way all the manufacturers will follow this obs code and uh, you know, any software can read this meters because they are based on this obs codes okay for uh, instance this obs code is you know a six segment code where it can be divided as a b c d e f a is uh, you know type of uh, metering here it is one means electricity okay electricity meter b is one means channel is one uh, it can be different for uh, data concentrator units c is one here means it is active power okay d is eight uh it means time integral okay it could be instantaneous okay is uh, historical anything if it is a different number e is 2 means it is tariff is 2 and f is 255 which is which means it is current the present reading okay so this way it is made uh, unique with these obs codes and uh, no this are as per iec 62056 okay but uh, in india the requirements are more than the iec or international standards because we, there is a huge list of tampers which are uh, required for the indian utilities uh, you know to be uh, recorded okay so this was not available in the iec standard okay so uh, bis they took this uh, standard they, there is a provision to include new obs codes for the standard body of, uh, of each country okay to uh, and uh, identify it as a uh, new code obs code in their uh, in, uh, country specific standards so that new parameters which are not available in the iec could be added so that way there were a few uh, standards which a few codes uh, especially for tampers and others which was uh, provided by bureau of indian standards and released this standard as is15959 okay so this is 15959 is uh, uh, no is the metering protocol standard okay for both three phase and single phase energy meters okay using this 
most of the uh, requirements of the utilities are met and the interoperability we have also achieved okay so uh, uh, three phase meters they are categorized uh, for uh, for uh, category as category a b and c okay for uh, depending on the uh, deployment and one category of uh, single phase energy meters okay so now uh, the requirement was for smart meters for smart meters you know there was no standards existing so whenever we really want to try uh, buy meters they should refer some standards they usually refer standards okay so this, since there was no standard uh, they could not procure meters even for their pilot projects okay so uh, again uh, cea brought out uh, a guideline okay uh, for smart meters initially for single phase meters they thought okay we can have four category of meters initially okay uh, all four will have bidirectional uh, communication uh, and uh, two category will have connect disconnect feature and two category will have uh, you know bidirectional energy measurement okay so then they thought you know, there will, uh, it could be reduced to two okay one category with uh, bidirectional uh, feature measurement feature and the other without but all both the category will have two way communication and connect disconnect uh, switch built in the meters okay so uh, finally uh, in august 2015 the first standard for smart meters you know to our knowledge that was the first standard in the world to be released for smart meters by bias okay so this uh, smart meters have uh, you know uh, built in uh, switch for connect disconnect and also built in modem for communicating purpose okay so ic15959 was already there for communication protocol so this i6 1 uh, i mean ic is 16444 the smart metering standard inherited the communication protocol from is15959 okay which was in, uh, released in 2001 11 but uh, there was another uh, uh, requirement more and above Uh, this is 15959 because they had uh, a few other parameters uh, like uh, for uh, built in switches and uh, communication modem so they had uh, um, a few more parameters to be added so that was not defined in 15959 part 1 uh, 2011 so uh, for addressing this is 15959 part 2 was released in 2016 okay so Uh, this was uh, uh, for smart metering purpose again 151644 was not uh, applicable for meters which are uh, connected to cts okay ct operated meters okay so it was only uh, meant for commercial and i mean uh, domestic meters where uh, uh, for whole current or direct connect connected meters okay so uh, the meters for Uh, city operated meters they released a standard for uh, as part 2 of 16444 in 2017 and uh, for this purpose they are to modify 15959 also so that was released as part 3 on uh, 15959 in 2017 okay so all these standards put together are indian standards for smart meters and there were a few amendments also on later okay so these are all uh, relevant uh, standards for smart meters okay the smart meter uh, has a built in communication uh, switch uh, okay there are two variants uh, the communication switch uh, okay the, the both the variants will have this metering part the load switch are the, uh, for connect disconnect and data communication protocol okay it will have an optical port built in okay and the communication module okay so there are two variants based on this part uh, d where the communication module will have nan module which can be connected to a data concentrator unit and the data concentrator unit will be connected to the head end system the second variant is the communication module will be the wan module which will be directly connected to the head end system uh, through gpls okay so yes uh, i mean gpls so these are the two variant of uh, smart meters and this can also be tested uh, in the lab we have at cpri we also test for smart meters so we have a, a, you know automated test tool uh, for uh, validating these meters 
both protocol as well as the uh, data okay so uh, the uh, static meter is connected to the computer and the data uh, there are some uh, request uh, which the test system send to the meter and the meter will respond and this is validated by the software automatically and uh, we can say that this is uh, as per the requirement or not okay so similar to this for substation also we have various protocols in a substation if you see an uh, electrical substation uh, there are various uh, you no know, components uh, relays uh, or an uh, rtus uh, um, this uh, transformer uh, tap changes and many other equipments so there are all uh, you know again electromechanical earlier now becoming static uh, uh, you know uh, equipments uh, so these are also communicating with the, uh, you know uh, within each other uh and uh, there should be some uniformity in communication protocol so uh, that is uh, you know again standardization is very important so that you no know, each device of different make communicate to another device of uh, another make and they exchange information and data uh, also it is useful for uh, monitoring and uh, control uh, uh professor sir so another 10 minutes is it okay if i hello is it okay if i exceed by another 10 minutes yes sir yeah? yes okay yeah. thank you okay so uh, there are lot of equipments uh, and uh, no uh, within the substation okay so each are communicating uh, to other devices maybe uh, the standard way is to communicate in the Uh, standard protocol what happens is usually if it is a greenfield projects and uh, it will be awarded to a single manufacturer and all the equipment uh, somehow will communicate because most of the equipments will be of a particular make okay so if the, there is an extension or replacement of equipments to be made then a different vendor will come in and uh, you know the uh, equipments will be of different make or uh, different type so again communication is again a challenge okay so for this uh, the communication used for uh, substation environment is iec 61850 okay so this is uh, another standard which is uh, not becoming very popular and most of the utilities in india are also going with uh, iec 61850 and uh, uh, the distribution utility in hyderabad you know they took a decision to replace all their uh, relays uh, based uh, on uh, to iec 61850 based uh, no uh, relays okay so uh, about uh, 228 substations uh, the distribution stations were all once uh, replaced recently with uh, 61850 based relays in hyderabad okay if there is no uh, proper uh, protocol or uh, if the device there is some proprietary protocol then there should be another protocol converters or something you know devices to be uh, used so that the data is exchanged in a smoother fashion so again these uh, devices uh, come in between and uh, you know uh, it becomes more complex okay and more issues may come in and the utility personnel should be trained to also tackle these kind of uh, issues and uh, the gateways on uh protocol convert uh, converters okay so they should be familiar uh, they should be familiar with these devices which is uh, unwarranted so instead they can go with all standard based uh, devices okay and devices of different generations are often incompatible maybe even from the same manufacturer okay they say that is a previous version or older generation so the new generation ones will not be compatible with that okay you have to replace that old one so it again no it uh, it is a huge cost uh, for the utility for replacing uh, existing ones okay so we can go with 67850 which uh, is uh, no compatible with the, most of the previous versions also and uh, the information can be exchanged in a uh, standard way okay and if you see the type of testing we should have uh, go for 
conformance testing to whether validate whether the device and the test or uh, device and the test or DUT uh, communicates as per the requirement of the standards and then meet the protocols and interoperability testing to you know uh, connect different uh, devices of different makes and see whether they are able to communicate with each other and performance as stress testing okay so this is you no know, the these devices are connected in a lab okay within the substation also so we have to we, we introduce you know a lot of traffic uh, in the lan network and see how the uh, you know device behaves uh, when there is stress in the network and the most important thing is security testing okay so this is uh, becoming more and more important and recently uh, there was an order from uh, you know ministry of power that you know whatever uh, devices are being procured especially from overseas uh, should be tested for cyber security okay and uh, should be tested for uh, torsions and malware so all these things are you know now coming up because we have uh, uh, you know neighbors who you uh, know uh, with whom we have to be doubly uh, cautious and uh, you know the uh, wars are waged uh, through this uh, cyber uh, you know uh, and uh, they are attacking this critical infrastructure and uh, power is one of the uh, critical infrastructure where the attackers are usually you know aiming at and uh, the uh, if you see the protocol testing for 61850 like what we have uh, for energy metering so this is again you uh, know uh, tested using uh, a software this also we have a facility at cpri where we uh, you know there is a conformance test tool connected uh to the device under test okay through the switch and uh, the device is energized and there is a series of test cases which can, we can run and see whether the device is meeting the standards requirement or not for this to happen and uh, we need some information uh, which is provided by the utility uh, or the uh, manufacturer of the device okay so these informations are provided in uh, four different uh, templates uh pix mix pix it and takes uh, and this uh, information are used while testing these devices okay and uh, uh, this uh, 61850 uh, lab is accredited by uca international users group okay and this is the body which accredits uh, the laboratories worldwide and also they give out test procedures for carrying out this test so the test tool is designed uh, for uh, as per these test procedures and the tests are carried out in sequence as per the procedures and our lab at cpri is accredited as a, a level a lab that means it is a independent test lab uh, by uci ug and uh, we carry out tests for 61850 and issue certificate which you uh, assemble uh, like this okay we are we specify what are all the uh, you know uh, uh, the features supported by the devices and, uh, and there are various classes or uh, conformance blocks okay uh, and uh, there are most of the blocks are optional okay and uh, we certify that and the important thing is uh, now the security part uh there are various iec standards also like iec 62553 and uh, there is an indian standard uh, released by bis also is uh, 16335 okay uh, uh, so these standards uh, again uh, are relevant for carrying out security and uh, we have uh, iec standards also uh, like Uh, I know uh, conformance testing uh, for 61850. There is a standard uh, IEC 61850-10, which talks about uh, conformance testing for IEC 61850. Similarly, there are other IEC standards for conforming uh, conformance testing also. Okay, for various uh, devices. So uh, there is a series of device standards coming out, and most of them are released, and a few are in advance. Uh, stages uh, by the iec and uh, the network shall have adequate cyber security measures 
secure access control, uh, authorization controls, logging, hardening, malicious software prevention, uh, network security, and it is to be extended to all the interfaces. Uh, network separation is uh, possible, but not everywhere. So network separation is involved in physical separation of log uh, and logical separation, which is located in the uh, front line of defense. And communication message as the last line of security is involved in data authentication, data integrity, and data confidentiality. And monitoring should be an integral part of security strategies for detain, um, detection, uh, mitigation, and reporting of any uh, cyber attacks. Uh, so uh, there is intrusion detection system, uh, software tools available, and also it could be configured in the firewalls of uh, the control centers and substations, so that you no know, any intrusion uh, could be detected and mitigated. And uh, des uh, designing of domain-specific IDS can be a viable security solution to enhance security capabilities of the current substation automation system. And the concept of network management can be expanded to enhance security monitoring capability as well as integrated uh, operation of IT and OT systems like what is done for the IT world. Okay, so the substations are dependent on information exchange of uh, on the overlying IT networks. Okay, for this reason, cybersecurity is not treated as an optional issue, but provide reliable operation uh, anymore, but a must-have requirement. Uh, the cybersecurity issue is gaining its importance and attention, and a plethora of works have been published to address this issue by government organization, international standard bodies, utilities, vendors, and uh, other stakeholders. So, uh, though these are all available, but you uh, know uh, that uh, proper uh, usage of these standards uh, should be there, and the testing of these uh, equipments before you know, uh, placing within the network should be taken up and also cyber uh, audits of the utilities of various control centers substations also should be uh, taken up from time to time so uh, if you see this uh, you know cyber security standards for uh, by iec okay there is 62351 as i told earlier 62351 standard uh, is a series of standards talks about cyber security and uh, we have uh, as one for you know 62351-100 series for uh, testing okay so uh, so this uh, uh, each standard each series like iec uh, 62351-6 okay here it talks about iec 650 profiles okay so 100 uh, 100 uh, 4 is uh, published for you know, 104 uh, so, uh, like this, no, I see six, uh, I here, I see 62351-100, okay, series is for conformance testing. So, again, you know, the physical separation as I, as we discussed, should be there as a first line of uh, defense and uh, this air gap uh, should, uh, should be there so that, you now there is no outside connections happening, but it is, you know, always not possible. Uh, to be having uh, physical separation because most of the uh, networks are connected to their enterprises network for uh, monitoring purpose uh, to their headquarters or other uh, you know, stakeholders. So again, this physical separation always is again a challenge and uh, we have to do some uh, way of uh, you know, uh, separating uh, logically or uh, virtually. And also when we go up uh, with you know, other firmwares, uh, like, you know, uh, this, say there's a relay, uh, static relay in substation, and uh, there is some firmware updates to be made. So again, you know, the, we have to connect the device to uh, the laptops and update the, update the firmware. So again, there is la, la, you know, possibility of you know, getting new uh, threats or viruses, which are malwares entering the uh, device, which is already in operation. And operating system patches, Okay, again, it is a challenge to uh, no, upgrade, up, update uh, periodically. A new logic update to address design flaws. Okay, if there is a design flaw, then uh, the manufacturer will tell we have to upgrade the firmware which is supplied already to you. So, you know, that again is a challenge uh, for the utility to uh, open up the network. 
and other maintenance purpose we you know usually uh, annual maintenance uh, contracts are given to third party vendors okay so they have they will update uh, or maintain their devices uh, and all these uh, communicable devices so which again you know can creep uh, uh, some new uh, firmwares or uh, malwares into their network okay so it is disabled to disconnect any unnecessary network connections and remove unneeded services okay and we should identify and designate reliable access points to the outside of the substation only through which information should be exchanged to the outside what so uh, with this i would conclude uh, saying that you know the, as the grid is made smart by deploying standard based solution it helps in addressing the security and interoperability related issues standard based implementations always helps in future scalability of smart grid network and seamless integration uh, with other applications proper awareness of program should be provided both to the consumers and the utility engineers for successful rollout of secure smart grid and planned implementation of smart grid will aid in integrating into uh, the smart grid infrastructure smart city infrastructure uh, so thank you uh, for your patience listening and uh, any questions uh, maybe you can uh, ask Yeah, so thank you, uh, Pradesh, for uh, your patience and the long presentation. And you have covered so many details, actually. It is like uh, from the industry perspective, uh, standards and technologies and everything. So uh, let's maybe, if in the interest of time, maybe we'll, let's take one or two questions, uh, if somebody has any questions. So um, uh, I have one question. Yeah. What about uh, uh, the status of uh, CIM, Common Information Model? Yeah, it's in one of the any of the utilities has started or anything else. Yeah, uh, SIM Common Information Model is so though it is existing from uh, for quite, quite some time and you have worked, you uh, know, uh, uh, during your early days uh, in this. Uh, in India, it is you no know, still uh, it, uh, in a very nascent stage, and also you know, uh, in IEC level, also people are now uh, harmonizing uh, SIM with other standards like uh, 61850 and SIM harmonization is going on, and uh, a lot of works are happening uh, with SIM also. And uh, as you know, we, you had worked on, you were also working on uh, green button and uh, you no know, uh, SIM. So a lot of works are happening, but you know the Indian uh, scenario it is very nascent, and uh, uh, we hope that you know the future uh, once this harmonization uh, takes place, uh, so that will be one of the uh, you know, most important uh, concept, and uh, it is uh, must have concept for the utilities also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, and also, you know, I would advise, you know, since these students are uh, coming out, uh, you know, after their PG and uh, UG, so most of them will have their knowledge, domain knowledge on uh, power. But you know, the standards perspective is not, you know, in our system or academia, it is not addressed much. But it is very much required. You no, know, even if they do some uh, research projects, their uh, academic projects, it is always advisable uh, to uh, go with some standard-based solution, so that uh, you know, when whatever uh, research they do or whatever products they develop is uh, interoperable. And you know, uh, this is uh, uh, the technology is fast changing, and uh, the communication is uh, the future. So. Uh, the standard based solution will you know, help in integrating other devices existing in the system uh, very very well so it is always to go advised to go with uh, standard based solutions okay okay so are there any final questions uh, uh, good afternoon sir 
Sir, I have one question. Yeah, yeah. yeah please. Sir, sir uh, as you have highlighted earlier that in AMI, we have lots of data which is being communicated between utility and the consumer in a bi-directional yeah. manner. Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, sir, actually, I am interested to explore or I am interested to know some of the research areas on which we can focus uh, during our academics for exploring the role of big data in AMI. Sir, are there any research opportunities uh, to explore this field currently? Yeah, you see, as you rightly told, there is huge data being exchanged between meter and the uh, utilities. Uh, if you see uh, uh, normally, if you see my one of my previous slide, where I had told how many parameters you know or the uh, meters are exchanging. So if you see here, uh, there are quite a few. Oh, yeah, this slide. So if you see uh, category a uh, single phase meter, okay, a uh, single phase meter, instantaneous parameters. There are sixteen parameters identified. Okay, uh, so this instantaneous parameters meter uh, the utility can read at any time and get these parameters. Okay, and the load profile uh, or the profile load survey data, there are uh, four uh, parameters. And if you see the same in uh, three phase category, there are about 13 meters. And billing, there are about 40 meters for category C meters for uh, billing alone. Okay, so these inform, uh, data are being transmitted to the utility every periodically, maybe. Uh, 15 minutes interval or half an hour interval. So uh, as per the standard, the meter will communicate either 15 minutes or half an hour interval. Okay. So even if it is a half an hour interval, so there is a huge uh, no data which is uh, uh, going to the uh, utility. Okay. Maybe the uh, as of now the utility is concentrating only on the parameters which is meant for billing. Okay. But for forecasting their uh, network or for uh, their um, you know, fu future uh, uh, scaling scalability, the, all the data is very relevant. So as you told, the, the number of data the meters are sending back to the utility is very huge, and these smart meters are also pushing data in addition to these uh, meter these parameters. Okay, in a programmed interval, and uh, they have a huge data, and uh, it is very difficult for the utility also to manage this data. And data mining and uh, is uh, is another concept where you know the utilities have to come up with, and uh, this is a good research area also where we can have we can you know segregate the data required parameters. And uh, you know the relevant parameters, uh, and uh, you know projected to the uh, uh, utility in a different uh, way. Uh, their statistics could be uh, you know uh, drawn, and various uh, uh, you know uh, way it could be presented to the utility where they can take decisions uh, accordingly. So uh, the data exchange is huge, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, data mining is one of the you know, requirements also. So uh, maybe you can work on that uh, if you are interested, and uh, the, the, uh, you can approach these utilities also where pilots are uh, going on. Uh, implementations are uh, taken up uh, are scaled up in a few very few utilities, but most of the utilities are going with the pilots. So including Hyderabad. Okay, so. Uh, data is available with the utility, and uh, no, this is uh, this could be explored. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, I think uh, now, since it is four, we'll we'll conclude the session, and I thank today's uh, speaker Pradesh for taking his time out from his busy schedule to make this presentation. So uh, thank you, Pradesh. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor, and uh, thank you all uh, uh, participants for uh, you know, patiently listening. And uh, I understand, you no, know, the standards uh, are uh, very new to uh, uh, the participants also, so it is uh, not, not that easy to understand. But uh, it is required. So I thought uh, it would it would be a nice platform to introduce uh, standards also, which are very relevant and in, uh, in smart meters and then in smart grid scenario.
and i also uh, apologize for initial glitch which uh, happened you know where, where i could not connect uh, to the uh, link provided and uh, there was a delay in the oh, it's okay yeah so yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity professor thank you